I understand why Krebs said he believed it was the most secure election in American mm -hmm. history. He said that because of the percentage of physical ballots involved in this election. Still, though, in an unprecedented paper ballots. election, paper ballots, in an unprecedented election in American history with the highest percentage of mail-in balloting we have ever seen, it's hard to believe this would add up to the most secure in American history. It is absolutely unprecedented what happened in this election. Now, does that add up? to the amount of election fraud to change an election. Does that add up to a court win for the president's legal team? Well, we spoke to Jonathan Turley, Fox News legal analyst, a little bit earlier about what the evidence is amounting to and the potential for a legal win for the Trump team. Listen to this. The problem is that there's this disconnect between the evidence and the relief being sought. You know, they've shown uh, irregularities. They've shown unlawful orders. They've even shown thousands of votes that were not counted. But they haven't amounted to the type of numbers that would change the outcome in a given state. But more importantly, these judges have balked at the idea of essentially negating millions of votes as, as a form of relief. And in Pennsylvania, the court said, look, these voters do appear to have been denied their right to vote. Uh, I'd rather count their votes than to not count millions of others. And that's the disconnect that he's facing. Jonathan was pessimistic on the president's team's success in court. Steve Ainsley, I think what's happening here is we are quickly moving towards a political case being made, meaning the Trump team is talking to state legislators in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and we know today in Arizona as well, attempting to make their case. There may not be enough evidence for a court system that there should be enough evidence for state legislators to change their electors. Will they find more success there? We'll soon find out. But ultimately, I think uh, the way the president has, uh, you know, his messaging on this, it's very clear he thinks the election was stolen. And going forward, uh, you know, there are a lot of people who are never going to believe the outcome of the election because the president said, look, these numbers don't add up. His case, you know, his case is being presented in various courts and ultimately it will, you know, they're going to figure out what to do. But nonetheless... What do you think? So that was Fox News host Will Kane making an absolutely troubling argument that because the court cases from Donald Trump and Sidney Powell and Rudy Giuliani and Jenna Ellis and all the rest have been failing because they failed to demonstrate in a court of law even the scant bit of evidence needed to show that, you know, there were too many extra votes or some Trump votes didn't count or that the machines were off kilter or what have you, that now the only option is the political route. That because in a court of law, you actually need evidence and you actually need to prove a case, they've not been able to do so. Now, the logical and natural path for Donald Trump is the political route. And what Will Cain means by that is he needs to go to the legislatures in these states and basically say to them, help me overturn the result. Help me steal the will of the people of your state, and if enough states do it, steal the will of the people nationwide. That's what Will Cain is basically saying, and he's effectively endorsing it here, because he's admitting, look, oh man, obviously something bad happened here, obviously, but you know, the stupid courts, the way it works, I guess, is you need evidence and process, and the person bringing the charges has to prove their case, and he's like, I have no time for any of that nerd stuff, so Donald Trump should just go directly to state legislators in Pennsylvania and in Michigan and in other other states and say to them, look, basically ignore the results, ignore the courts, ignore science, ignore decency, ignore everything and make me president for another four years. That's what Will Kane is saying here. And it's very ugly because again, even on Fox, they've for a long time now, most Fox News hosts have been saying, look, the president has all of these legal rights. He has the right, and some would say even the responsibility, to explore all his legal avenues to ensure the result was fair to everyone. For him, for Biden, for the third party candidates, for everyone. Once those are exhausted, though, the result should stand and Joe Biden should be president. Like, that's the argument. And you could think that's too generous to Trump because his law cases have been spurious at best. But 
you know, now because those cases are clearly failing and time's running out and they've won maybe what one of the cases and it was only a, a really minor procedural win. It didn't actually change any of the results. Now they're realizing it's not going to work. And you see at least some Fox News hosts making the open call to subvert democracy, to steal democracy from the citizens of key swing states. And again, because of the Electoral College, that would steal the will of the people on who they voted for for president from every American, those who voted for Biden and even those who voted for Trump, because their will collectively is represented by the whole result. And I really think this is, again, a couple things happening here. One, there is a civil war at Fox News. I don't know how badly it's going to break out, but you can see it. You can see some Fox News hosts like, say, a Lou Dobbs or a Maria Bartiromo, like just totally buy in and legitimize Trump's false narratives. On the other hand, you have more traditional news anchors basically say this is over, like Sandra Smith or whatnot. Be like, we called it. We called it weeks ago. It's over. It's done. Joe Biden's president elect. You can like it or hate it or be in between, but it's done. And, and those two sides are increasingly clashing. And I think another factor has to be known here. And I think this is why Fox is tolerating this sort of thing, because I think pre OAN, pre, you know, one America news network and pre Newsmax, Fox likely would have already made the full pivot towards recognizing Joe Biden. They would have given this a few days. They'd be covering Trump's legal challenges. But then they would have said, look, you know, it's unfortunate that, you know, a Republican president lost, but we're hopeful about the Senate and we're going to keep moving forward to hold the next Democratic president to account. And you can count on Fox News, unlike the liberal media, whatever that is, to, to, to we'll, we'll actually hold the Democratic president to, uh, you know, their feet to the fire and, and those sorts of things. But because of these right wing news sources like OAN and Newsmax, existing and gaining momentum and basically being endorsed directly by the president saying, I'm not watching Fox News as much anymore. I'm not watching Fox News daytime, especially as much anymore. Go to OAN and go to Newsmax because they'll give you the real news. They're not going to give you fake news. They're going to give you the real news, which is that the election isn't over and I actually won. And there's actually no doubt that, you know, I won, whereas Fox is sort of hedging, you know, some hosts saying the election's over, some saying Trump definitely won, many of them saying we don't know the result yet, those sorts of things. And, and, and that's not even good enough for Trump and his sycophantic fan base. So they're like OAN and Newsmax it is. That's why Fox is sort of stuck here. They are legitimizing even more than they used to the poisoning of American democracy. And you can say, well, of course, not everyone agrees with this. They have people at Fox that have basically acknowledged reality, but that just goes to show that the network has yet to really find its identity post Donald Trump. You even have people like Tucker Carlson, who on the one hand was attacking Sidney Powell for saying she's bringing no evidence and making all these big claims and it's irresponsible. And then a few nights later, basically saying what Will Cain is saying is that whether we can prove it or not, clearly this, this, this election was not fair to the current president and was tilted in favor of Joe Biden and all these sorts of things, which of course there's absolutely no evidence for. This is where we're at. The Fox News Republican Civil War could well ignite. You saw the elements of it yesterday where Fox News, Maria Batti Romo, had an interview with Trump where he went at Republican Georgia governor, Brian Kemp. How is Fox going to navigate this? I don't think they know the answer, which is why they're flailing.